Hello, welcome again to Siempre Siendo Reformados. My name is Andres Martinez and I'm from Puerto Rico. It's raining outside. I hope that doesn't bother you much. In this video, we will continue the series I began some time ago on the hypostatic union, the doctrine of two natures of Christ. This is a doctrine believed by us Trinitarians and it means that when we look at the person of Jesus Christ, we see in him that he has uh, he is 100% a human being and 100% a divine being. He has two hypostases, two natures, two substances. The substance of a human being and the substance of a divine being. He is 100% man and 100% God. And what I believe is uh, unique about this series of videos that I'm doing is that not much Trinitarians put, not much Trinitarians emphasize the humanity of Jesus as much as they would emphasize the divinity of Jesus and that is something we have to be aware of and we need to put that same emphasis on both truths because as we will see in a moment the humanity of Jesus is completely necessary for our salvation and another reason I'm doing this kind of videos is to point out to you who are not Trinitarians that if you want to deny if you want uh, to deny the the divinity of Christ you can't provide texts that prove the humanity of Christ because we would do that also and we would be in complete agreement with you on that point Jesus is a human being what you need to do is to provide texts that deny very clearly the divinity of Jesus and that is something really hard to do so in this video, we're going to first prove his humanity and we're going to emphasize why his humanity is necessary. First, we will look at the text of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. And let me add this before reading the text. That in this, uh, the two texts I will be presenting to you in this video are both written by Paul. And they both explicitly teach these two truths. The first text we will look at explicitly calls Jesus a man. And the next text we will look at explicitly calls Jesus God. So that's something we need to have in mind. They both are written by the same author and they both have the same uh, level of clarity, the same level of of explicitness if that is a correct word to use so let's get to the text uh, first Timothy chapter 2 verse 5 says for there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus so the text is completely clear Jesus is a man and why is it important to emphasize his humanity if we look at the text that for example I've looked at in this series of videos and by the way, I'm going to leave the links in the description below so you can check them out. And if we look at the text that I have looked in this series of videos, we see that when the humanity of Jesus is presented to us, it is presented along the truth of propitiation or expiation. Because, and specifically in, in Hebrews 2.17, it says that the humanity of Jesus was absolutely necessary for propitiation to take place. And that is something we see in Philippians chapter 2, in Hebrews 2, 17, and in this text of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. Let me read for you first Hebrews uh, 2, 17, so you can see this necessity of his humanity. Hebrews 2, 17 says, Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. So, the text says that his humanity was necessary for the propitiation of the sins of the people to take place and that is a, a similar concept as what we see in first timothy chapter 2 verses 5 through 6. so if we read now the two verses it says for there is one god and there is one mediator between god and man the man christ jesus who gave himself as a ransom for all which is the testimony given at the proper time. So the truth of Jesus' humanity is uh, often connected with the truth of the propitiation he made for the sins of the people. 
So this is why we have to keep in mind his humanity and emphasize it uh, with uh, the same strength we would emphasize his humanity. So now let's look at the text that proves Jesus' humanity. We looked at the text that proves explicitly his, uh, his humanity. Uh, now we will look at the text that proves explicitly his divinity. So the text we will look at is Titus 2.13, and maybe you've already heard the text and you maybe already have engaged in discussions about the text, but the fact of the matter is the text says what it says and is as explicit as uh, 1 Timothy 2.5. The other text says explicitly Jesus is a man, and this text says, Waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory, of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So this text explicitly calls Jesus God. And relevant to this text is the discussion of the Granville Sharp Rule. If you have not heard what the Granville Sharp Rule says, uh, I'm going to read the, the rule for you. Um, let me find the tab here. The rule number one of Granville Sharp's uh, six rules of Greek grammar. The rule number one says we're going to read the rule, explain it, and then apply it to the text. It says, when the copulative chi connects two nouns of the same case, that is nouns, either substantive or adjective or participles, of personal description respecting office, dignity, affinity or connection and attributes, properties or qualities, good or ill, if the article ho or any of its cases precedes the first of the said nouns or participles, and is not repeated before the second noun or participle. The latter always relates to the same person that is expressed or described by the first noun or participle, i.e., it denotes farther description of the first named person. So, in other, way, in other words, what the rule says is that if you have a phrase that is made, by, uh, made of a, a, a definite article, then a substance, uh, a noun that can be a substantive, a participle, or an adjective, then you have a copulative conjunction that in English would be and, and then you have another substantive. These two nouns refer to the same person. Let's say uh, that I met uh, the creator and owner of a telephone company, uh, Mr. John, maybe. So John is both the creator and the owner of the telephone company. This both nouns of personal description refer to the same person, that is John. And note that these nouns cannot be plural or um, they're, they're gonna be prop they can't be proper names. They have to be nouns of personal description, uh, whether either substantives, participles, or uh, adjectives. So in the text of Titus 2.13, we see that we have our, that is the definite article in the genitive case, our great and the adjective great is also describing the next nouns that come after. It says our great, that, that's where we have the article, God, that's the first noun, and that's the copulative conjunction, and Savior, that is the next uh, noun, and these two nouns are preceded by the the definite article, which is our, and they are connected by the copulative conjunction, and so they both refer to the only person who is in view here, that is Jesus Christ. The Father is not in view, the Spirit is not in view, anyone else isn't in view, it is only Jesus Christ. So Paul is calling Jesus our great God and Savior. And similar to this text is 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1, where it says, let me read it for you uh, quick, real quick. 2 Peter 1.1 1, 1 says, um, Simon Peter, a servant of a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a faith equal standing with ours by the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So 
here we have the exact same words uh, excluding the adjective grade but the truth is the fact of the matter is we have the article our the two nouns God and Savior and the capillative conjunction and and they both refer to Jesus Christ so both Paul and Peter are calling Jesus God and Savior so back to Paul we saw in the first text that he calls very explicitly Jesus man in 1st Timothy 2 5 and then the same author in Titus 2 13 calls Jesus God with the same level of clarity of course both texts are not an example of Granville sharp rule but the point is they're written by the same author with the same level of clarity and so we see that this truth is taught by Paul this both truth his humanity and his divinity and there is nothing you can uh, really do to deny it. Uh, some people arrived here. Uh, I'm sorry for that. So we see these truths are both proved by these two texts, and it is really hard for a for someone who denies uh, the divinity of Christ to deny the truth presented in this text. So, hello. So, um, as I was saying. These truths uh, are explicit in the text, and they are really clear. They cannot be denied. So I hope this uh, text has been useful to you, and I, I will pray that the Spirit will continue to help you in finding the truth of uh, the Scriptures and knowing the truth that Jesus Christ is both God and man. God bless you.